Welcome to Salt and Light with Pastor Randy Mitchell. Jesus said to his disciples, Ye are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Salt and Light confronts the difficult and often controversial issues that affect today's culture. The only hope for this generation is for more people to follow Jesus Christ and for his followers to be salt and light in their community. Pastor Randy will discuss the Bible solutions to help us know what God says about the problems we face today. Salt and Light is a ministry of Temple Baptist Church in Statesville, North Carolina. Here's your host, Pastor Randy Mitchell. Welcome to Salt and Light Broadcast, and I emphasize the capital S-A-L-T today, Salt and Light. Brother Glenn Coppinger and myself here in the studio, we appreciate you being with us here today. And uh, Glenn, how are you today? Well, I hate to brag, but I'm pretty fantastic. Pretty fantastic. All right. Well, that's not bragging if it's true. That's what I've been told. So Okay. All right. Well, we have Salt uh, capital S-A-L-T in bold letters and light today. And we're going to be talking about a subject that I wasn't, to be honest, Brother Glenn, I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but uh, this came across uh, by way of current events and news release and so forth. And uh, it's just been stirring my heart. I feel a little bit like the Apostle Paul did there on Mars Hill, where he said he saw the city totally given to idolatry, and it says that his heart was stirred within him. And Glenn, I'm going to try to be kind today, but I got to be honest, I'm a little worked up, a little bit angry. (laughs) And so uh, uh, to all of you listeners, I apologize in advance if um, my sarcasm and venom overflows. And so people are probably wondering, what are you going to talk about, Pastor Mitchell? Well, several days ago, many of you know that Nike released some information regarding an upcoming ad campaign yeah, featuring Colin Kaepernick. And, uh, of course, I'm sure that all of our listeners are familiar with Kaepernick and all of his, you know, take a knee and uh, not honoring our flag during the national anthem. And I know for some people it's like, oh, this is old news. We're tired of it. No, folks, this is important. And uh, I'm, I am so, you know what, I haven't, uh, I have probably watched no more than a minute and a half of NFL football since all this started happening. Yeah. And I used to watch it, um, I, I wouldn't use the term religiously, but I enjoyed watching it. And if there was a game on, I tried to make plans to either record it or watch it. And yeah. I've been living fine for, um, you know, the last year and a half <laughs> without NFL football. And I actually feel good about it. And until they get this right, um, I'm certainly not a supporter, but Nike out of the blue decides that they're going to take this the next step further. Yeah. And so this big ad campaign with Colin Kaepernick's face, right? You know, he's narrating the ad. He's the, the poster child of this slogan. And here's what it says. Listen to this, folks, if you haven't already heard this. Believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. Now, I thought about that, Brother Glenn, and there have been some pretty famous marketing slogans throughout my lifetime. Yeah. And uh, some of them I like, some of them concern me a little bit. Of course, one of the biggest ones of our generation has been Nike's um, um, slogan, Just Do It. Yeah. And I think you did a little bit of research on the Just Do It. Uh, Tell our listeners a little bit about where that slogan came from. Yeah, so, you know, 1988, uh, July 1st, 1988, that's when that actual slogan first debuted for Nike. And um, when you actually read about it, they credit uh, an individual named Gary Mark Gilmore. Well, if you do a little research on Gary Mark Gilmore back in the uh, mid to kind of late 70s, uh, he had actually uh, had kind of a crime spree. And in the course of these committing these crimes, he had actually killed two individuals and and was ultimately tried for those. And uh, he was then sentenced to death by firing squad. Uh, and he was at the uh, Utah State Prison in hmm. uh, Orem, Orem, Utah. And uh, or rather, he might that's where maybe the crimes were done was, was in Orem, Utah. But anyways, in Utah. And so, uh, just prior to having the execution squad fire and, uh, 
co- carry out his sentence, uh, they said, hey, do you have any last words? And he says, let's do it. And so the one of the uh, keys, in uh, his name is Dan, I think it's uh, Wyden, uh, with uh, Wyden plus Kennedy Marketing, which is the primary ad agency for Nike. Uh, he remembered that, and so that's where he took that let's do it uh, from Dan, who, or rather from Gary, who's going to get killed, to then let's modify it to just do it in regards to the Nike ad campaign. Wow, that's interesting. I want to talk more about the just do it here in just a few minutes. But before we do that, I'd like to uh, just say a few words. You know, this new slogan where they're saying believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. You know, that may sound very courageous, but folks, that's exactly what Osama bin Laden did. Right. It's exactly what terrorists are doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's exactly what Timothy McVeigh did. And the, the list could just go on and on and on. It is a very foolish slogan. In many ways, just like the just do it slogan is very foolish. Yeah, it may motivate somebody, but at the same token, the issue is not motivation. It's what we're being motivated to do. Right. Just believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. And I think about Colin Kaepernick and what he's, what exactly is he sacrificing? Um, you know, I'm not exactly sure what he's sacrificing. I do know that uh, the course of his actual playing career, uh, millions of dollars were earned by him. As a backup quarterback? <laughs> well, you know, at one point he did start. He did, took yeah. a team to the Super Bowl. You know, yeah. um, I do remember him in college. He actually, uh, his... He lost the Super Bowl, right? Nevada Wolf Pack beat the Boise State Broncos oh, yeah. <laughs> on field goals in Nevada. But, okay. uh, you know... The- That's another reason I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not Idahoans. We're Boise State fans, you know. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, oh, actually, North Carolinians, right? I guess we're Tar Heels <laughs> now. So, but anyways, so but then even even here with Nike and having this ad campaign, uh, I don't. I'm not sure what the actual dollar amount of the current ad campaign that he is generating from that. But uh, sacrificing everything, if everything equates to not having a position on a football team in the NFL, if that equals everything. Man, I gave up everything a long time ago. Yeah, so he's making millions of dollars from Nike, and he's not even having to get beat up on the football field. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Which is a shame, in my opinion. At least I would feel better if he was at least getting beat up every now and then. (laughs) But uh, anyhow, um, so when I heard about this yesterday, I I have some before and after pictures in my phone. I went out and took a picture of my Nike golf bag, and it's got the swoosh on the side of it. And so that was the before picture. And then um, the after picture, I took some of my redneck duct tape and covered it up. And so I don't have, I, I think that may be the only Nike product that I have, but I covered up that swoosh, and I don't care what kind of fancy country club I play at, um, I'm either going to replace that bag or certainly the duct tape is staying over the Nike swoosh. And yeah. I understand that even after just a few days, and I'm, I'm rejoicing over this, I'm hearing that is actually costing Nike uh, a lot because of their promoting uh, Colin Kaepernick and what he stands for. And I'm rejoicing in that. What, are, what have you found out, Brother Glenn, that it's costing Nike so far? You know, just the initial, the initial, uh, you know, once the, the, the news broke, uh, there were reports that the Nike stock had actually dropped 3%. And, you know, one group, Apex Marketing Group, they estimated that $43 million worth of exposure have been generated. But with that stock dropping 3%, that equates to some $3.75 billion in market value. So there's a potential loss there. And, uh, you know, and there's a lot of different things that, that you, that you find in regards to looking at this. You know, it, it reminds me a lot of the election. And I remember, you know, and I'm probably going to misquote this, but it, it was almost like, you know, this surprise that Donald Trump ends up getting into office, but it's like, well, the, uneducated, uh, white, middle-class Americans, they've come out, you know, they, they got out of their fields in mi- the Midwest, and they came out to vote, you know, and, and I remember just hearing some of those things like, you know, we're, scra- we're sitting here scratching our heads, and so now, when you start reading some of these articles, the what they're deeming the angry white 
yeah. you know, non-millennial, they're angry now. So therefore, because of this whole situation, so it's just all it's de- degrading into is just kind of this name calling you. You're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're bad because yeah. you're upset. Yeah, we're bad because we're upset while they're disrespecting our veterans. Were they're disrespecting people who made the ultimate sacrifice? People who really sacrificed for believing in something that was right and true and a just cause and this is certainly uh, certainly not worthy of the venue i'm perfectly fine with people protesting and believing in something but the venue in which they chose is disrespectful in a major way and i think that what we're seeing already 3. um 3.5 3.75 billion dollar loss in market value i am hopeful folks that this slogan that they're trying to promote becomes their epitaph on their <laughs> corporate grave where it says believe in something even if it means sacrificing everything i hope that this ends up uh, taking down them as a company because just like all of the liberals, they just couldn't believe that Donald Trump would get elected. Mm-hmm. And I think what they underestimated, they overplayed their hand thinking that the news media and Hollywood represents the majority of Americans. But I believe that even though they hold the power of media and their voices being heard, there are still true, red-blooded, God-fearing, gun-toting Americans that are what this nation was founded on, the same people that are paying the bills, the same people that are buying the NFL products, the same people that are purchasing Nikes, that, that's where I think they underestimated just the, the common blue-collar country boy in America. And what I want to encourage people to do, and I'm not a big boycotter, and, you know, what you choose to do with Nike, folks, that is your, that is certainly your choice. I know for me personally, I'm not interested right now in the NFL. I'm certainly not interested in Nike products. Uh, I hope you do the same thing. I'm not going to look down upon you if you don't get on my bandwagon. Yeah. But at the same token, um, that's the only thing that's going to create true, the right kind of change in America is when we hurt them in their pocketbook because that's all that they really care about. The owners of the NFL are trying to clean this up because, thankfully, it's costing them monetarily, but they're not doing enough. They're trying to appease both sides, Mm -hmm. and what they need to do is say, hey, we're not putting up with this because we believe in America, and we're able to make all of this money because of the freedom that we have and and they need to start appreciating that. So anyhow, uh, you know, there's a connected issue to this, Brother Glenn, and that is um, I also read a news release. Uh, this is from LeBron James, who's uh, uh, one of the Nike, um, what do you call it, Nike? He has, a, he has a, a big line and he has a big part in Nike with his apparel and with his shoe line, and uh, but I think he's actually signed a lifetime contract with them. Okay, for, so he's one of the faces yeah. of Nike as a company, and he said this, I stand for anybody that believes in change. I stand for anybody that believes in a positive attitude, and I think, how is this? I, I understand there's things that need to be changed, but any change is not positive change. And so uh, standing with Nike over this slogan, believing in something, folks, the issue of life and death all comes down to what we believe in. Not just any old thing is a good thing to believe in. But as I was researching this, Brother Glenn, I also came across something that LeBron James said in regard to his background. And listen, to folks, this is what he said. He said, quote, I believe African American women are the most powerful women in the world, end quote. Now I understand where he's coming from. He had a mother that he owes a lot to, a great yeah. debt of gratitude. I don't know much about his mother, but I'm certain that she was a, a good woman and made a huge difference in his life. But by saying that, that's racist, folks. To say African American women are the most powerful, the way I look at it, it doesn't matter. A good woman that is making good and righteous change, it doesn't matter what the color of their skin is. 
I mean, can you imagine if I were to quote that about my mother and say, I believe that white women are the most powerful women in the world? You know what the community would say, man? They would be thinking, oh, that preacher, he's a racist. Well, racism and bigotry is wrong. I don't care which color side that you're right. on. And this is not solving our cultural problems. Because isn't race, because from my understanding, it would be basically elevating one race or class of people above some, another one. That's exactly what it is. And you know what? I don't, I, I'll be honest with you folks. I, I look at the character of a person, not the ethnicity or mm -hmm. their social standing. There are, there are good people from all different races and social and economic backgrounds. And what we need to do is get back to righteousness and judge people based upon their character, not based upon uh, anything else. And so, boy, the clock's ticking, Brother Glenn. i got to get to this. So, <laughs> anyhow, I, I, you know, I, I believe black lives matter. I believe white lives matter. I believe all lives matter. And John 3.16 makes that clear. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so Jesus came to die for the sins of the entire world. And he's not willing that any should perish. Right, right. Now, I'm going to describe this portrait because I, I'm not a big artsy guy. Art doesn't typically, you know, stir emotion in me. I'm just a, I'm a redneck guy from Idaho that <laughs> didn't grow up with any culture. And so, but this is a portrait that my wife shared with me. Somebody posted it. And I'm going to kind of describe it, but uh, maybe for those of you on Facebook or on TV, this is a portrait, and it's got a picture of Colin Kaepernick and one of his teammates in their San Francisco 49ers uniforms. They're kneeling, taking a knee on a piece of turf, and underneath that turf is literally hundreds of U.S. soldiers that are have their hands raised up and underneath they are holding up that piece of turf and then underneath them is soldiers that are laying there with their bodies ripped in shreds and blood and then underneath that is a whole pool of blood and I'm telling you folks when I saw that I was moved to tears and I thought that's what they are, they're kneeling on the same turf and disrespecting the men that are literally holding up what they do. And I want to share this with you. I've got a few minutes here, and I may not get through all of this, but Ted Nugent wrote this, and uh, I think is definitely worth repeating, and some of our listeners no doubt have not heard this. He said, take a knee. Take a little trip to Valley Forge in January. Hold a musket ball in your fingers and imagine it piercing your flesh and breaking a bone or two. There won't be a doctor or trainer to assist you until after the battle, so wait your turn. Take your cleats and socks off to get a real experience. Then take a knee on the beach in Normandy where man after man stormed the beach, even as the one in front of him was shot to pieces, the very sea stained with American blood. The only blockers... Most had were the dead bodies in front of them, riddled with bullets from enemy fire. Take a knee in the sweat-soaked jungles of Vietnam, from Quezon to Saigon. Anywhere will do. Americans died in all those jungles. There was no playbook that told them what was next. But they knew the flag that they represented. When they came home, they were protested as well and spit on for reasons only cowards know. Take another knee in the blood-drenched sands of Fallujah in 110-degree heat. Wear your Kevlar helmet and battle dress. Your number won't be printed on it unless your number is up. You'll need to stay hydrated, but there won't be anyone to squirt Gatorade in your mouth. You're on your own. There are a lot of places to take a knee where Americans have given their lives all over the world. When you use the banner under which they fought as a source for your displeasure, you dishonor the memories of those who bled for the very freedoms you have. That's what the red stripes mean. It represents the blood of those who spilled a sea of it defending your liberty. While you're on your knee, pray for those that came before you not on a manicured lawn striped and printed with numbers to announce every inch of ground taken, but on nameless hills and bloodied beaches and sweltering forests and bitter cold mountains, every inch 
marked by an American life lost serving that flag you protest. No cheerleaders, no announcers, no coaches, no fans, just American men and women delivering the real fight against those who chose to harm us, blazing a path so that you would have the right to take a knee. And I'm going to close with that. There's, I don't have time to read the rest of it, but folks, that speaks volumes of the real belief the way that we need to be believing in something, and that certainly puts it in perspective. And so, Brother Glenn, this um, this concept of taking a knee in protest, I, I want to draw our listeners' attention to something in the Word of God that is certainly important. Now, Nike says, just do it. Mm-hmm. And yet the Bible says, ponder the path of thy feet. Mm-hmm. Let all thy ways be established. The Bible says, don't just do it. Think about what you're doing and make a wise decision. In Proverbs 7, there was a man who just did it. He went Mm -hmm. after that harlot, that adulterous woman. And the Bible says he goeth after her straightway as an ox goeth to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. So just do it is a foolish, foolish notion. And if we think that we can just do whatever we want to do, the book of James makes it clear. We ought to be looking at it not as what we're going to do tomorrow, but we ought to say if the Lord wills. Yeah. We are at, we are at the dependency of a sovereign, almighty God, and our life is just a vapor. And then, of course, when it comes to taking a knee, there's someone that everyone that ever lived will be taking a knee to. And I'm going to ask you, Brother Glenn, to read to our listeners Philippians chapter 2, verses 10 through 11. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Folks, God says that every knee that has ever, every person that's ever been born, past, present, and future at some point in human history is going to bow at the name of Jesus. And you know, whether you, you know, talk about slogans. There was a slogan I grew up with. I think it was Fram Auto Filter, Brother Glenn. Okay. You remember that one? Uh, I remember Fram Auto Filters. I don't, the, the, the commercial doesn't stand out this moment. They, they said, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. There you go. You kind of like Timex takes a licking but keeps <laughs> on ticking. Folks, you can pay me now or pay me later. That's a good slogan. <laughs> And, um, you know, the Lord says every knee is going to bow. You can either bow to Jesus Christ yeah. right here and right now because one day, whether you want to or not, God's creation, you can do it willingly with a repentant heart, trusting God, loving Jesus Christ, or you can do it by force one day when every soul of every human being is gathered around the throne of God and every knee is going to bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm glad, Brother Glenn, that I've already done that. Yes, sir. And I have no problem saying publicly, Jesus Christ is Lord. And I'm so thankful that he's my Lord and he's my King and he's my Savior. And our listeners, folks, uh, he wants to be your Savior. If you're going to bow a knee, bow it to the Lord Jesus Christ. We appreciate you taking the time to join us at Salt and Light. It is our desire that you experience the joy of following Jesus Christ. He loves you, and he died on the cross for your sins. He will give you hope, peace, and eternal life if you will repent of your sins and trust him as your Savior. You may see yourself as a good person, but you will never be good enough to deserve heaven. You may see yourself as bad, but you can never be too bad for Jesus to forgive you. You can call upon him to save you this very moment. If you are a born-again Christian, we want to encourage you to obey Christ's command and be salt and light to those around you. We encourage you to find a Bible-believing church that does not compromise or water down the Bible. Get involved serving the Lord. If you have a Bible question or a particular issue you would like us to discuss on Salt and Light, visit our website at templebaptistnc.com. Click on the Salt and Light link. Once again, that's templebaptistnc.com. May the Lord bless you. We hope you'll join us again next week.